Hey everybody. I hope everybody had a wonderful and Merry Christmas and we're glad you're joining us here on Grown Man Record Night where we stream the best music uh, your uncle ever heard every Friday night on our Ustream channel. Uh, Ustream.tv slash channel slash Machete Miller. We do this shit every Friday night and we stream music from 8.30p uh, long into the evening and uh, uh, we do it all the time and we enjoy it because it's what Friday's all about. I've been on vacation. I've been on vacation for a long time. I'm not sure what um, I'm not sure what, uh, what what day it is other than Friday. I think I got a little uh, like a little less than a week left on my vacation. I've been off since like the 18th of December. Um, I've been enjoying myself and therefore I've been having a hard time with uh, keeping up with days and whatnot. But had a great Christmas. Hope everybody did. Um, got a lot of cool stuff. I got this cool cap. My parents hooked me up with this cap. This is a, this is a real deal cap. Uh, but I can't keep it on too long. It's too hot. But I need it because I've, uh, during the vacation, I've been rocking uh, my hawk. Cameraman cut, cut a mahawk in my head. And um, I have really, really enjoyed having a mahawk throughout my vacation. I think I'm going to make that a new tradition. Every time I get a vacation, I'm going to rock a mahawk. It's been fun um, uh, looking in the mirror and looking like a goofball. I like looking like a goofball from time to time. Um, I've got a lot of cool stuff for Christmas. Cameraman hooked me up. Oh, man, go grab those VHSs, son. Cameraman hooked me up with a little Christmas present a little early uh, this year. And uh, we don't normally, we, we decided in sixth grade, uh, a gentleman's agreement that we weren't going to exchange presents because it got to where my parents are buying him stuff. His parents are buying me stuff. And we're like, oh, we're just, we're going to nix this in sixth grade. But he did pick me up these mugs, man. It ain't well, record. I just happened to be somewhere, and they were just really yeah. cheap, and I could you were, not you were pass digging. them up. You were digging. I, I, I personally don't need that in my collection of crap, but oh, I yeah. figured you'd enjoy it. These are two uh, G.I. Joe VHSs picked up at Thrift Store uh, Delight. And um, these are uh, Satellite Down and Countdown for Zartan. VHS G.I. Joes of the FHE Family Home Entertainment VHSs. You can't let these slip by, and so that was my first Christmas present this year. That's awesome stuff. Uh, but I also picked up like the new Call of Duty, so uh, I've been doing that a lot. And uh, w what's funny is this whole vacation, like prior to Christmas, been rocking Battlefield 4. Um, you know, and uh, driving tanks and uh, learning how to fly the helio choppers and -pa 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 -pa, doing all that stuff. And uh, then Christmas, I got the Call of Duty, and so now I've been doing that, running all crazy. And so it's been a uh, it's been a, a video game Christmas, which is the way I like it. Even I'm an older gentleman, it makes me feel like a younger gentleman. It's a good way to spend Christmas so you're in your vacation. Get all dirty, not shower up uh, very often. Uh, just sit. Learning and, curve. Just sit and uh, sit in your own filth. You know what I mean? Have cold beer, play some uh, play some stuff. I uh, want to remind everybody, our, our, these segments will end up on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Machete Miller. We're going to have a contest coming up. I've talked about it before. We have 91 subscribers when we hit 100. We're going to do big things. We're going to give away a cool stack of vinyl, um, uh, probably a Grown Man Record Night ornament and some other stuff. Speaking of Grown Man Record Night ornament, I know we mentioned that we could give away some Grown Man Record Night ornaments. Our good friend Trish Mullins on the, uh, our YouTube channel, she, man, she watches like all our shit and comments on all our stuff. We really appreciate Trish. I hope she had a, a great holiday season. She said she wanted an ornament, so uh, we're gonna send her one of those. That's very cool. Um, maybe next year will be hanging on her tree. You know what? I think she's up in the Northeast somewhere. Use the That's postal cool. system. A cool, a cool member to VC, man. She, she knows USPS. She knows where it's at, you know what I mean? So, but, but really appreciate her. She, Man, she's on our stuff all the time, you know what I mean? She checks out the show all the time when we put it up. And, uh, that's cool, man. That's really cool. Uh, what else we got going on? Uh, some of the best stuff this year, man. I don't know. I don't buy nor a lot of new records a lot of time. Got to mention the, the new boards of Canada that I picked up this year. Um, Speaking of year, I, 
This is something we hadn't even discussed. I just right. realized. Uh -huh. This is the last show of 2013. This is the last show of 2013. Yeah. We're, we're supposed to do probably a big, uh, a longer, like... Uh, After tonight, we'll see y'all next year. That's true. Well, and we talked about doing, like, best of year and then the chips and the sodas and stuff. And, man, I've been on vacation. I just really... Uh, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. But, um, you know, th things that come to mind this year musically, uh, and I don't keep up with a lot of the new stuff that comes out. I try to do my best, but... A lot of that shit just doesn't interest me, you know what I mean? I'm, I'd much rather be getting my knuckles dirty up in the crates and whatnot. But uh, new Boards of Canada, obviously, and the Boards of Canada reissues. Queens of the Stone Age had a new one. Uh, that was pretty good. I enjoyed hearing that. Uh, Clutch had a new record out. That was really cool. Some down and dirty new rock and roll from Clutch. Uh, what else came out this year, man? I don't know. That Daft Punk, eh, that was okay. Uh, but... Not a lot of stuff that I just ran right out and got. Did Taylor Swift do anything this year? Probably. Yeah. I don't know. So anyhow, we were going to do a thing. Who? I don't. I don't like things. I'm not a big fan of things, so we'll just keep it moving the way we do it here on Grown Man Record Night. Um. So uh, I tell you what, let's run down some of the stuff we played this evening uh, here live on our Ustream uh, TV channel. Um. Hey, you want to hook us up with a little uh, Ustream.tv channel? Look at us a little Joe graphic. A little thank God it's Friday. Uh, actually, I uh, mentioned uh, over the vacation, like I said, I'm kind of getting my days mixed up, but probably about three or four days ago was the 30-something anniversary when um, Jack Webb passed away. He actually had a new version of Dragnet in the works, but we love some Dragnet and some Joe Webb. He's on that, uh, he's a jazz fan, and he was a horn player, and... Uh, cool cat, but uh, he passed away 30 years ago, 31 years ago, this past week, and, uh, you know, just throw, throw that out there, a little, little titbit, titbit, okay, well, so let's run down some of the stuff we played this evening, uh, this is one of the biggest sleeper records, and every time I put it on, it's one of those, and I'm like, damn it, why don't I play this record more? I should be playing this record all the time uh, when I'm in fusion-y type moods. And we're talking about Spyro Gyra. And uh, you'll find these out cheap, man. And it, I always think it's going to be like a really 80s band. And I will say, uh, it's kind of a fusion, jazz, rock type record. Um, it does have some tracks on it, which reminded me of On Hold music. It sounds more like a 70s band stuck in the 80s. Uh, yeah, that's a good. That's probably a good representation. But it's um, you know, it's got its moments, and it's one that I, I see it in the stack, and I'm like, eh, I don't know. Hey, I organized my jazz section this uh, this over vacation, so now officially my, all my rock and all my jazz is in alphabetical order. I'm slowly making my way down the list. What the hell do you do? Let me ask you something. What the hell do you do with uh, Junior Walker and the All Stars? King Curtis. They're both probably sold. I would That's say. I, would put them, yeah. I don't really have a soul section. Do you people have soul sections? I've got rock, jazz, funk, and like uh, some other smaller I got a soul sections in the country. Yeah. I got a soul you section. have a soul section? I don't have very many Maybe records. I should do there, that. But, I mean, I don't, I don't have a section, but I have stuff that I would put in my soul section if I organize my stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've got some Otis Redding. I've got some Junior Walker. Oh. I've got some, uh, you know. Let's uh, play some Otis Redding. Archie Bell and the Durrells. You know, but, d does that go in rock or does that go in soul? I was trying to keep that all kind of lumped together, but I felt kind of stupid. It depends junior... on how old that rock is. If the rock yeah. is from, you know, the 60s or the 50s, then it might sure. just go in soul. Yeah. See, now it's getting diluted. It that's what I did. To. That's what I didn't want to do. I wanted to lump it in as least amount of categories as I could. But then there's some of those, like Junior Walker, that makes me a little nervous. I almost want to kind of want to put it in funk if I'm going to go rock, funk, jazz. Kind of want to put it in funk, but I kind of want to put it in rock. I really want to put it in put it soul. Between funk and rock, because they're in alphabetical order. So put it between them. Yeah, no. Anyhow, uh, Spyro Gyra, great. If you see it, pick it up for for a buck or a couple bucks. It's worth it. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't probably wouldn't spend the house on it, but uh, you know, hey, followed it up with a little Alan Parsons Project Pyramid. Love this record. I uh, don't play it enough because I love I Robot and. Uh, Eye in the Sky so much, and uh, Ammonia Avenue is a good one, and I, I don't think it's been a while since I played Pyramid. There's some versions of this, if I remember correctly, I think uh, 
remember my man Wes talking about one uh, particular pressing of this is really shitty, and I don't know uh, how to distinguish those. Uh, but this is the pressing I have that may be the shitty one. You actually gave it to me. You gave me a lot of this Alan Parsons. I love Alan Parsons. This sounds pretty good. I don't notice anything crazy. It's getting to where we, we're starting to need to think about replacing our cartridges. Um, I don't like buying super duper high, high dollar cartridges. No, we've well, got as many crappy records we've as we've got. We've got a few records. We don't want to buy the most expensive needle. Right. Because uh, we've got enough to ruin a good needle in short order. Plus, uh, I mean, not to, not to talk sideways, but we do a fair bit of drinking around this area. And, uh, you know... We may very well be the ones to rule the need off the record. Exactly. I don't want to be held responsible. That's why when I get real expensive records, it makes me nervous because I know I know when it is that I play records and it's after I've had a couple of beers, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So anyhow, but it's getting time to replace some needles and uh, people got um, uh, like some recommendations of something kind of middle of the road that will work for us. If you're a fan of the program and you kind of know what we do here, uh, make some recommendations. You know, we're not necessarily, we, I do a little bit of scratching, but I don't do any like, you know, I'm not like a club DJ out there scratching. So, uh, and it don't need to be it's that. It's good, since there's two tables, it's good to have one, one needle can be more expensive than the other. That's true. You know, one of the tables will be for the, the really rough records. The other one's for the for the better records. I'd like to keep them the same. I, I would be willing to spend a little bit of money if I knew I was getting a couple of good cartridges. You know what I mean? Then you'd be afraid to play those. The, no, but that's what I mean. But somewhere, in the, somewhere in the in middle, the, somewhere in the middle. Weird, random ones that just I don't want to spin so out rough. the ass because we've got some rough ones. But I don't know. Hey, we follow that up with a little Lionel Hampton, uh, "Please Sunrise." Great record. A little slower, but some uh, from Lionel. But uh, great, great stuff. Hadn't heard this one in a while. I think it scares me off sometimes because it is a little slower. That's that's what happens. <coughs> My throat hurts. Um. How about a little Fleetwood Mac up your uh, bungholio? And this is the Future Games album. And uh, this came out, uh, what is this, 70? Christ, I can't remember. It's got a date on here. I can't read nothing. 71. This is early Fleetwood Mac. Um, one of my favorites. Such a great record. Got to where I was playing it a little too much, probably. And uh, But it's been a while. It's been a while, so that's cool. Um Followed that up, played a little 45 action. We play a few 45s here from time to time. We got quite a bit between the two of us. Uh, we don't play them a lot because that means you got to keep up with what's going on. Uh. And we like to keep up a little bit with what's going on, but we like to float around the house and have a good time and do our thing at the same time. Uh, but this was a 45 from Peter Frampton, right? Uh, Rocky's Hot Club. Totally not familiar with this track. <laughs> Uh, from the A&M album, I'm In You. Inappropriate. Uh, inappropriate. That's a very inappropriate title. I don't, it's 77 on A&M. That was a cool track. It didn't, I'm, I'm uh, kind of, eh, on Peter Frampton. Some of his stuff's okay. I appreciate what he did. Wah, 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 wah. You know, I appreciate the stuff he did. He was the first person to ever play an electric guitar. He was. Him and Benny Goodman. Um, Benny Goodman, well, Benny Goodman invented loaned the him a guitar. guitar. Yeah. He invented it, but did not play it himself right. until Frampton came along, and then he learned. That's what I read. I, I, I wrote it, so. How about a little Joe Turner, Great Rhythm and Blues? This is a great, another probably goes between soul and blues. Maybe I should lump soul in with blues. Could I do that? Yeah. Soul and blues yeah, together? Yeah, soul and blues I would probably kind of put together. Okay, I'll think about and that. And one end would blend into funk. I'll think about it that. Gets there, man. I'm just it, saying. It's, it's tough. Uh, You're right. It's tough. This is uh, Joe Turner is famous for the Kansas City blues shouting style, which when I read the back of this, I'm like, okay, I'm sold. Somebody's hollering about something. I'm probably going to be into it. Uh, first came to Decca Records in '42. These are some great uh, rhythm that, and blues is that, tracks. Is that 1942. 19. 19. Great. Uh, Rhythm and blues tracks, early stuff, really getting down. This is from like 50s. Good stuff, man. Didn't know anything about that record when I picked it up. How about a little DJ Shadow? Introducing. Bling, bling, bling. Had to bust out a little introducing. It was a Christmas present uh, a few years ago, a couple years ago, four years ago. 
I don't know. I'm not into time. I'm I'm no longer into time, so it, it ain't gonna matter. Uh, nowhere, from nobody, from anybody ever that said. Well, ZZ Top, tres hombres, love it. The better uh, records from ZZ Top. This is a reissue I picked up for three bucks, but it's in fantastic shape. Let me tell you, and uh, really dig this record. Great blues rock stuff, man. Uh, if all you know is Post Eliminator ZZ Top, uh, and ain't no shame in not knowing, uh, go back and pick up some of the ZZ Top from the '70s. It'll blow your mind, man. If you've never, if you're not familiar. And a lot, a lot of people out there might be like, who doesn't know that? Well, some people don't know that. Just shut it. Shut it. Uh, so if you, if you see it out there in the wild, pick it up. It's good time business, man. Good time business. And how about a little Thelonious Monk? Also a Christmas present from two years ago, I believe, from the girlfriend as well as that DJ Shadow. This is uh, the unique Thelonious Monk. It's a reissue. Very personal treatments of great standards. It's on Riverside. Fantastic stuff. What do we listen to now, cameraman? You're making this sound really epic. Yeah, you gotta build up to something, man. Are you building up to it? Oh, baby. It makes me, it puts really high expectations on me as a man with a Mahawk. Okay, I'll tell you what. We're, we're nearing our recording limit, aren't we? Because we're stupid and we don't shut this down. All right, let's go ahead and do that business. No, stop recording. Stop recording. Yep. And we're back. We always forget to do that. Ustream has a three hour recording limit and uh, we'll hit like two, two, uh, two hours and 50 minutes. Dude, let's do the show and we'll do the show. We get 10 minutes in and then it says, hey, hey, we got to stop down recording. So now I have more clips to edit and download and deal with. That's what happens. That's what oh, happens. Oh, you got to edit. Poor TV guy's got to edit. I don't know. What do you know about TV? I know that you know how to do it, and it shouldn't be that big a deal that you have I to edit TV. something. I'm the president of television. In case anybody didn't know, wanted to know what, what, what really... Well, you will be. You're not yet, but you will be. I'm the president of television. Okay, I tell you what. Let's no, uh, no effing around. Let's go right into the dig of the week. You know what I mean? We got a couple things we need to talk about. We're going to talk about some stuff that I got for Christmas. Some great, great records from the girlfriend for Christmas that we've jammed a little bit of uh, up to this point. And then we're going to play some more of it later. But I got a couple of things. Got a couple of things I need to talk about first. Dealing with the new year. And uh, this will be the last time we join uh, one another. This particular year, we're going to have a New Year's, what, next? Week. Week. Next week. New Year's where people uh, drink a lot and I'm drinking this whole vacation. What am I going to do on New Year's? Don't drink. It'll be a new reality. Heroin. New Year's heroin. I know a guy from Pakistan. Uh, by, uh, we'll start three. Two, one. Okay, this dig of the week, since we're talking New Year's. Uh, New Year's is kind of like uh, Christmas. I mean, it's not like Christmas at all. It's like Thanksgiving in that there's not a whole lot of songs that point to New Year's uh, specifically. Traditional, classical songs. I will say, however, uh, we've got Old Ang Syne, obviously. This is a Christmas record we played. Uh, over the, the last uh, show because it's got some great stars on it singing Christmas records. Well, it has a song on here. Um, where the hell is this at? I'm looking. I'm, I'm Where the hell is it at? Where the hell is it at? Where the, where the hell is it at? Damn it. I'd like to now, say something about the music here yes, in the background. Say, say, say it on. It's 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 making you lose your place. It's that it's that scene in the movie yeah. where, where okay. It's it's. I piercing. found it. I found it. I'm gonna bring that it down is. a bit. Yeah, that's that, that's uh, this 2001. It's making my brain jiggle. I don't, there's a song on this Christmas record called "What Will the New Year Bring," uh, by our good friend Donna Fargo. 
now. Donna Fargo, you may ask. She's the happiest girl in the whole USA. That was her big track. It sounds something like that. She is from Mount Airy, North Carolina, which is about an hour from here, probably. And I got the opportunity to shoot with Donna Fargo, and I made a commercial with her. She was the uh, um, the spokesperson for a commercial that I was making. And so Donna, I got to meet her, and she was an older lady, a very, very pretty lady, and very nice lady. And we made a commercial together. And she's on this record I got, and it talks about New Year's. And so, yeah, there you go. A New Year record. We'll, pl we'll play it. We'll play on it. We'll don't, don't ever tell her to her face she's an older lady. Oh, she's an older, I mean. Don't, you, you don't, tell you don't you say what, it to an 80-year-old. You know, she's probably 70. Even a, yeah. She no, don't, don't look a day don't past it, 55. You don't say it to a 90-year-old. Um, and what would it be without, what would it be a new year without a little, this is cameraman record here, a little U2 war, and of course, New Year's Day, which is one of my favorite U2 songs. I got some friends in a cover band I used to play in an original band with, and I used to always go request them to play New Year's Day because um, it's such a great song, and I loved it. Good stuff. It's fantastic stuff. So that's a couple little New Year's things. Uh, make sure on New Year's Day, I know uh, not everybody's from the South, so let me tell you what you need to do for a prosperous uh, following year. You need to eat you some uh, collard greens. You need to eat you some... Uh, black eyed peas, and you need to eat hog jaw. Now, that's right, folks. I said hog jaw or hog jowls, as they may say in other places. Um, or, as a girlfriend said, it, you know, I would enjoy it if you didn't call it hog jaw. And I'm like, okay, face bacon, because that's what it is. It's face bacon. Um, and it's better than bacon. If you like bacon, it's a meatier cut of bacon with kind of a rind on the end. That's your... If you can even imagine, it's got more fatty flavor. It's than better bacon. than bacon. I'm a big bacon guy, mm. obviously. It's better than bacon. If done right, I mean, you can really mess it up. Sure. Yeah. It's very salty at times. Yeah. But Maybe, uh, uh, a, a lot of people do pork of some sort in general. Hey, They'll have ham. You know what you can do is cook it into your black eyed peas, and then you kill two birds with one yeah. stone. So the, uh, the idea with the, um, the black eyed peas is for good luck. No, no, no. That's for money change. 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 That's for you, you jiggling money, jingling money. Your collard greens is for your paper money, green, fold Bills. money. And uh, your hog jaw is for good luck. So don't scrimp on the hog jaw now, folks. I'm telling you. Go on out to your local grocerya and get you some damn hog jaw for New Year's Day. Also, don't wash clothes on New Year's Day. That's bad luck. My mom would beat me to death if I washed clothes. That means bad luck for the whole damn year. Don't do it. Don't do it. It may be bullshit, right? Don't do I've it. I've never heard that. Why one would you chance it? Why would you chance well, it? I, I, I won't do it. Why would you Just chance it? I've heard it? Don't do it. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about. These are all records I got from the girlfriend for Christmas. Fantastic Christmas when it comes to records. So you dug those out of a box wrapped in. Fine paper. Fine paper. She gets that good shit. She gets shit. nice paper. She gets that nice paper. And a hand does the ribbons, the, the oh, yeah. bows. They're really crafty and artsy. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, I like, uh, I Actually, wrap them. They're the kind of ribbons you would go to a specialty store and pay $5 for. I've been to specialty stores. And seen them for $5. I've seen, um, something. Um, so here we go. Christmas edition, post-mortem, Dig of the Week. The Deftones, one of my favorite heavier bands. This is White Pony, sealed, 180 gram vinyl. Double LP, which means it's got those fat ass, wide grooves, which we like here. It's a bitch to have to get up and switch the record um, so often, but uh, man, we love those big, fat, wide grooves. This is came out in 2000. Um, Terry Date, of course, um, uh, produced the Deftones, Pantera, uh, lots and lots of other groups. Um, this notably has the song Passenger on it, which features uh, not only the Deftones, but Maynard from Tool. 
Uh, if you've not heard Passenger, we may play that here. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll play that. Here coming up in just a few minutes. Um, it's such a great song, one of my favorite songs. Great mix, Deftones and, uh, and Tool together like that. Um, something we heard uh, a side of earlier is Nirvana's Incesticide. This is my second Nirvana album. Nirvana is arguably the most important band in my musical history. They were kind of my Beatles when I came up. It's when I really started bucking the system and figuring out what else was going on out there outside of my own comfort zone. Nirvana was kind of the one that showed me the way. Became a little bit obsessed with Kurt Cobain when I was like, you know, 17, 18 years old. There's the backside of that. Look at that. That's a back, great backside. Incesticide is one of my favorites. It's got a lot of the B-side stuff. Can't, this has got the colored vinyl. Cameraman, let's show this off if we can. Um, we haven't shown a lot of these off. I'm just gonna switch this thing on this side. Cause uh, this is a very unique colored vinyl. And um, it's uh, translucent uh, with a little bit of hint of the color, that greenish, brownish, something from the front cover that kind of piss greeny yellow color that's the color of the vinyl mixed in with almost almost transparent so it's a little bit translucent but uh how cool was it dude to hear uh side a of nirvana's incesticide on vinyl her dive and sliver and all those great tracks on there um I, like i've never heard them before that's very cool. I picked up, uh, I got Bleach a couple of Christmases ago, or last last Christmas. And then I've got Incesticide this Christmas. I mean, that is, that's, that's money in the bank. Um, also something we played earlier, a little Tool Undertow, played side A. This is another one where they made a double LP out of it. So where some fat grooves, which means this shit sounds amazing, which it, did we heard side a which is intolerance prison sex and sober had to play sober um this is a great reissue sounds really good very happy with it something I'm, i didn't have any tool in my collection pick that up and uh, we listened to side a earlier not to mention she hooked me up with some opiate this is still sealed tools opiate this is tools first album uh more of an ep if you've not heard this before a lot of people that are into tool will remember this is 92, 92, man. So this is a uh, fantastic uh, stuff. I can't wait to hear that. We're gonna keep it moving. Got three more that I picked up for Christmas. Um, you know, speaking of Christmas, we had something we left out. Cameraman don't wanna talk about it, he don't wanna show it. But of all those Christmas records we played and showed last week, uh, some of them are cool, some of them were a little corny, corny cornball, but we played them anyhow. Cameraman actually had this in the stack and we, ne we neglected it. Frickin' Jim Henson and, uh, not Jim Henson, uh, The Muppets and John Denver. Now, I remember this Christmas special. This was an actually televised Christmas special. Um, and, uh, man, I wish we'd have played that. But you know what? We're going to wait all the way again for another year. And we'll play it. And next year we'll make a big deal about it. Because I'm a big Muppets fan. So, hey, man. We'll catch it next time. It ain't no big deal. Okay, check this out, folks. Coming up to some just grails of mine, even though they're reissues. How about the first Mr. Bungle? Sealed, 180 gram vinyl reissue. Brand new, produced by John Zorn. This is Mike Patton's group, which has Trey Spruance, uh, Trevor Dunn, et cetera, in it. Uh, one of the most instrumental, let's show this guy off. One of the most instrumental records in my uh, in the history of my personal music. First time I heard Mr. Bungle, cameraman was with me, blew my mind. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, it was like crazy. It was crazy. And I remember thinking- I can't wait to hear that on vinyl. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. I, I remember the first thing that came into my head was, this is what my brain does all the time. And finally, somebody made a record about it. And this is like, man, it's 91? Uh, it, it's real early. It's like 90 or 91. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I first sir. heard it in probably 90 95. Yeah. That's right. Uh, so we were already behind it then, and th they had already put this out that early, which is crazy. Because 
I tell you why I know that is because 95 is when Disco Volante came out, if I'm not mistaken. The second bungle. I'm losing my voice like Peter Brady. The second bungle record. And I also have that. Is this 180 gram? Oh, it is. It is. So I've got the um, second bungle record, Disco Volante, which is a little more out there. A lot less listenable. I love it. As a matter of fact, I, I, I before she bought that, I had that CD I dug out and I was playing it in the car. Yeah. It's completely unlistenable. I no, mean, no. you know, it's not unlistenable. It's great. But it's not the kind of thing you put on if you want to hear some music to chill to or listen to or drive to or anything. It's I, like, I disagree. It's like a, a whole kind of... It's a whole kind of... Uh, I've got this other uh, CD he did called Pronzo Ultra and Yeah, Vista. it's not that bad. It's not... It's close. Nah, it's just random I, I have sounds. a very intimate connection with this record, so even the ones that are a little more out there... Oh, they're not even a little out there. They're... But Desert Search for Techno All. Yeah, and that's like the only one on there that's really what you might call a song. Ah. The rest are compositions. We'll let the viewer decide. Yeah, they're compositions. Uh, You're going to put that on? Let's do it. We'll, we'll, let's play the first one first. Yeah, we're going to play the first one first. We'll play, we're will play. we going to play that. Yeah, we'll probably play that for our little break. Let's play the first bungle. For our break, and yeah, I got a little, let's, let's I got a little, I got a little clip to lead off with of a little funny thing, and then we're gonna play some bungle. Right okay. now, three, two, coming now. up. Go. Except for this last record, this is one I told the girlfriend, "You're not gonna find this one." So it she don't matter. She was particularly proud of that. It I don't matter. You. She always comes to me like a, maybe a week before Christmas to, to review what she bought for you yeah. with me to make sure it's okay, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. That's she was like, he told me I'd never find this, and then I did. She was so proud. This is, and folks, you may not be familiar with this. It's a band called Volto, okay? This came out this year, Volto, and it's already hard to find on vinyl, even though it came out this year. Um, this is, oh wait, what do we got here? Stand by folks, we got a call. Hello, you're on the air. I'm on the air. Yeah, what's going on? Who is this? No, this is not Sports Center. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I must have called the wrong number. Hey, man, how's it going? What's I'm watching the show? You're out there watching the show. Great show. Great show. Cool, man. Have awesome. you see? Do you see? Awesome the, we we got Steve Fever joining us uh, live on a on a phoner. Hey, Cameron, let's get a graphic going. What kind of graphic you got? I'm I don't know. I don't think right we. Now. So I had right. to quit watching so I could call you. Yeah? But yeah. Yeah, man. So where are you at? You got some Mondo, Mondo records. Um, I... I'm down in uh, the Atlanta area. Actually, it's called Woodstock, Georgia. Woodstock, Pleasant, dude. Pleasant burb of the Atlanta area. Where the skies are clear and starry night. And it's uh, yeah. pretty cool. Hey, we saw the space station earlier. A cameraman and I went outside and saw the space station. Did you wave? We waved at him. Uh, we've got our ham radio equipment, but we didn't. Uh, we can only get the down link. We can't, I can't get the up link. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Graphic. So did, were you able what to um, load any images? Yeah, I've got some of those images in there. Because <laughs> I figured we could do the first ever mobile dig. Yeah, hey, look at this. We we got uh we've got the speaking of mobile, it's an armadillo on tracks. That's the Tarkus album. Tell us, you picked up this Tarkus album. What is that? Uh, yeah, that's uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer Tarkus. That's their second album from 1971, and uh, it's 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 awesome. It's awesome. It's uh, there, ain't, there ain't no hits on it. It's like full prog to the max. Full prog. To the, I've seen that out, and I didn't realize that was Emerson Lake and Palmer. Right. Some of our local bookstores, used books and more. Uh huh. So I, I, I frequent them from time to time. Uh, they kind of dwindled in their record collection over in Winston, but uh, I do plan to hit Greensboro, see what they got left over there. But uh, I got about six records over there. Nice. Yeah, the Tarkus album. Did you see the, the Best of the Straubs? Yeah, I just put up that uh, Best of the Straubs there, uh, cameraman. It looks like strawberries. 
that album, that album blew my mind. That's, uh, those guys, I've seen them around, but I've never really taken a chance on them. I thought, what the hell? <laughs> nope. It's, uh, it's like folk rock. Right, right, uh, right. It, it sounded like Genesis. There it you sounds go. like Genesis meets airport convention. Yeah, now I've seen this. I've seen this record at Ronalda, and it was pretty pricey. Yeah, I, I picked it up for like seven, I think. Oh, that's nice. D- Dude had like 15 on it. It's a double album. It's a double album. Yeah, and... uh, They're, they're kind of psych folk, you know? Yeah, it's a little... I was going to pick it up one day. It was a little slower than I thought it was going to be, and I think it turned me off. But then I heard another clip, and I was like, oh, man, who's that? And it was a Straub, so I dig it. Yeah, okay, uh, what else did you pick out? Hang on, I'm going to let Cameraman tell you. Cameraman, click on a graphic and we'll tell you about it. We'll, we'll tell you which record it is. Which one yeah, was... Tell me what pops up. I think it's, uh, it's a Squeeze record? Yeah, this is called Cozy Fan Tutti Fruity. Oh, that's the one. That's the one you've been looking for. Uh, it's it's uh, the first record they put out after they got back together. They broke up in 82. And I saw these guys in Atlanta at the Fox Theater in 85. And this is, this is the tour they were on. Okay. It's not as great a record as the earlier stuff they did, but it's it's still it's Dick the Tilbrook and Jules Holland. If you ever watch BBC America, there's a show called like Later with Jules. Yeah, I've seen that. He's in Squeeze. Yeah. Jules Holland was in Squeeze. Yep, he sure was. Okay. Yep. I should already know that. Guys, for this for this album. So yeah, it's it's a cool cover though. I love the cover. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, tell me, tell me about this. Uh, tell me about this Joe Jackson record. Yeah, Joe Jackson, uh, Body and Soul, came out in uh, '84. It's on the NM Records. We're a Joe Jackson it's, uh, fan. It's jazz music. pop. It's just like Night and Day, which got that jazzy feel to it. You know, it's just a great record. Uh, he said it was like the hardest record he ever put together because he'd just been on tour and he, he almost decided he'd never tour again after putting this record out. But now that's a really good record. You know, I love the cover. It's got this old, old jazz feel to it, you know, but it's really an 80s record. Yeah, the, you know, because yeah. we're, we're big Joe Jackson fans here, and, uh, you know, what's the big song he did? The uh, Stepping, Out. Stepping Out. Stepping Out, you know, and that whole record that that's on is that uh, cameraman's got it. It's fantastic. Is she really going out with him? Yeah. Is she really going out with him? I, yeah. I did not know that was yeah. him. So, so what does this record sound like? Sounds a lot like what he did for that Night and Day album. Uh huh. Stepping out on it. It's got a lot of the same kind of jazzy pop feel to it. It's got some good songs. I only gave it like a one time listen through. I hadn't yeah. heard it before. But I really liked it. Well, that's cool because we, uh, we love Joe Jackson here. Hey, let's go to the next one, cameraman. What, what, what's up next here? Stand by. And what do we got? ELO. Is that an ELO record? Yeah. That's an ELO record. Now, which one is this? Yeah. Uh huh. They came out in '73. United Artists label. Huh. Um, the, the 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 hit of note on it is "Roll Over Beethoven." It's the one that they did, and uh, I think that's the reason why people say you know they they kind of like took off where the Beatles left off. Well, the Beatles also did "Roll Over Beethoven," but yeah, this album's great. I thought it was their first album that I picked up when I, when I saw it, and I've seen it. I've seen it a lot in store in like digs. Sure. It's always been kind of scratchy and beat up. Yeah, it's always beat okay. up. I've seen it. It's always been beat up. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, this one's in this one's in perfect oh. shape. Perfect shape. Huh. Well, that's oh, cool. Real pleased. That's one I don't have. I've got a lot of ELO records, and I, I don't have that one. Last but not least, go pick up, pick up old Booker T in the end. Oh, Booker T, baby. Now, tell me a little bit about what's going on with this one. Yeah, this is from 1969 on Stax Records. Woo! Ooh, man. And it has got, it's mostly covers, uh-huh. it's got like the horse on it, it's got Lady Madonna, Light My Fire, but it's just, it's Booker T to the bone, it's, it's awesome, it's a great record, uh, I, I really enjoy, I listened to it twice, just for the hell of it, and uh, it's, uh, I was really happy to pick that up. That, and, that's awesome, yeah, dude. I, I was going to say something about what you were saying about uh, funk. Yeah, like uh, Junior Walker and the All Stars, and like uh, a King yeah, Curtis. Yeah. I, think, I think what you really need to do is, is relabel funk as soul and set everything into soul because funk belongs in soul. That's 
trying to say. So Interesting. Long. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I could really see yeah. that. That's what I've done. I put I put Clarence Clemens and some of these other artists in in, in my funk records, but they really don't belong. But that's really it's really a soul area. Yeah. See, that's how I was before I started. But you know, because over vacation, I've organized my jazz records, uh, like alphabetized them. You know, sometimes sometimes Q's not too funky. Sometimes he's funky, and sometimes he's not too funky. But if you put him in soul. Yeah. You're okay. I, you talking about Quincy Jones? Oh, yeah. See, now, I've got Quincy Jones in jazz. And even though, because he's got some, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's tough. See, there, there's some there's some guys in there that really throw you some curveballs. But I think, like, a funk-soul combination would be maybe the way to go. So, and another, another note before I go is the right. image of it. But uh, next time I come over, I'm bringing a shipment. Oh, hey, show, let's show the shipment, cameraman. The last picture down there. This shipment's larger than the shipment before. Now, if you followed us here on... over a couple of uh, carpenter, carpenter boxes. Yeah. Little airplane bottles. And we, we sampled airplane bottles from around the world of different liqueurs and, and whiskeys and scotches and whatever. And some of them were nasty and some of them were just awesome. And, and we're going to do that again, but they're... Yeah. There's some real unique bottles this time around. It didn't take us very long to kill all of those, and now you got more for yeah, us to was, kill. That was kind of surprising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have what you call probably, a problem. Probably a good thing I didn't, I didn't bring those over before the end of the holiday. Oh, no. <laughs> Things have been crazy around here. <laughs> you know how the holidays are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, At least you remembered it was Friday night, right? I, I did. I was like, a oh, Friday, i got to charge the battery. I got to charge the battery. We're going to do a we're going to do a program this evening. But yeah, so this weekend I plan on going to IKEA tomorrow, picking up a Christmas present. I'm going to get a couple more of those uh, the smaller uh, LP vinyl cases. Oh, the, the expediter. So, yeah, expediters. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, those are. Uh, everybody says those are the way to go, and it's a pretty good price. Yep, can't beat it. So, but I'll let you get back to it, man. Okay, man, we're going to finish up. Hey, I got that Volto record. You hear me saying that? Yeah. Dude, the the prog record, the Danny Carey prog record, Danny Carey, the drummer from Tool. Oh. Yeah, I've got God, it. I didn't hear that. Yeah, that's this last record I'm going to show. So, hey, I'm going to show this okay. off real quick, and then we're going to play a little bit for some bungle on our break, and I got a, I got a funny thing you'll be interested in. So uh, thanks for calling in, Steve Fever, and yeah. uh, enjoy your time down there with your parents. I might go over to the world of Coca-Cola and shoot a stand-up for, uh, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, go talk to the Coca-Cola people. Tell them I said this. I'll, I'll see what they say when I'm coming with my, with my uh, iPhone camera. Yeah, tell, them, uh, tell them I said it's okay. Steve Fever rocks. All right. Yeah. All right, man. All right, we'll see you. Thanks for calling in. All right, man. All right, then. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. Uh, happy New Year. Hey, that was Steve Fever, folks, calling in from Hot Lana. Uh, down there visiting and uh, got some cool stuff over the over the over the break. Like I was saying, Valto, Danny Carey's prog band, Danny Carey, the drummer from Tool, one of the best drummers going nowadays. You can't really argue that. If you say, "Well, I don't know," how about shut up? You don't know anything, so shut up. So I tell you what, folks. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna close down this edition, Dig of the Week. It's been fantastic. Appreciate Steve Fever calling in. Appreciate the girlfriend hooking me up with such dope-ass Christmas presents. What we're going to do, we're going to do us a little funny thing here uh, coming up in our break, and we're going to follow that up with a little Mr. Bungle, and we're going to come back with a So To Speak and Chip Chat that you're going to want to stay tuned for. It's going to be a good time business, big time business, and things you're going to want to tell your uncle about next Christmas. Uh, what's that last thing loaded in down there? Dun, 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 dun. No, I didn't use the, the yeah. third duh. The, yeah, the, duh. Yeah. Okay, so uh, stay tuned here on Grown Man Record Night for uh, some very funny things. So uh, we appreciate you. Boy, we appreciate you for this year-end edition here on Grown Man Record Night. This Metabeats is brought to you by Liberty Medical. You need a better life. Good morning. I'm Dr. 
Dr. Strange. Actually, I'm Wilfred Brimley, and I'd like to rat for a few minutes. Obey these simple rules and do these simple things. I promise you, you're going to be getting ladies every 15 or 20 minutes. Now, I'm going to give you my best. So pay attention to Wilfred the Love Doctor. If you want to get ladies, you're going to feel my language. So loosen up. Take my medicine, and you're going to learn to do like Brimley. I have a dick like a horse and an unquenchable thirst, but I take doctor's medicine so I don't come first. I do my commercials. I want to get paid. My ads get me rich. My dick gets me laid. Nice, nice, Brimley. Nice, nice, Brimley. I've done things I shouldn't do. Nice, nice, Brimley. afraid of. I'm doing it with ladies every 20 minutes, and I like to eat ladies pie. If you gentlemen don't like my path, I guess you're gonna fucking die. Ladies like my company. I love all through the night. I've got the most energy. See if I'm not right. So laugh all your cares away and have some friendly fun, cause I've got 15 or 20 problems, but uh, bitch is not one. Nice, nice, friendly. Richards. Nice, nice, Brimley. Nice, nice, Brimley. Don't f with Wilfred Brimley. If you want to talk to me, I really don't got time. So pay attention to my song. Learn every doctor to blind. And to the fortunate ladies that I love along the trail, you better get tested. And thanks for the tale. The day I got engaged was the worst day in the world. Cause I don't want to live my life doing it with just one girl. In closing, I would like to say that I'm simply better than you. You're not even good enough to eat my Brimley poo. Nice, nice Brimley. Nice, nice Brimley. I'm laughing at my family. Nice, nice Brimley. Thanks for your time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for staying with us. We're going right into a brand new show to speak. Uh, yeah, a very special edition of uh, So to Speak. It's, um, it's a thing. I got one soda. Uh, that I want to talk about, and it's um, it, it's a soda that's very near and dear to my heart. We've mentioned the regular version on the program early on, uh, probably over another holiday season, um, in which a family member may have brought it to me or something or other, something or other. I don't know. It was a family member. Um, yeah. So we're talking about. A soda from Alabama, which is where my mom's family's from, called uh, Grapey Co. Now, we've had the regular Grapey Co. Uh, get out of there, bug. That bug's too big on this shot. Hey, look at that. All right. Um, different shot. Very dynamic um, shot. Yeah? So we're talking Grapey Co., cameraman. Uh, it says a Southern tradition established 1914, naturally good. Now this is the diet version. I've never had diet before. My aunt brought me some diet. I prefer diet sodas uh, for the most part. They just, they work better for me as a, as a fat man. Uh, I don't need any extra sugar. I don't drink a lot of the regular sodas. They're not good for you. And as I recall, you get those about once a year. I get these, a family member. I get these grapey codes about you once a year. Up from where, where South Carolina? Alabama. Alabama. This is an Alabama soda. I know it's from south of here. Birmingham, Alabama. So here we go. We're going to try the, um, I've, I've already taken a peek of, out of this. But this is the, um, let me tell you a little serving suggestion. We've mentioned this before. It's something I discovered by accident. Grape soda and peanuts. Grape soda and Chinese yeah. food. 
Chinese food. So you get your little general sal combination. You know what I mean? You got your damn, uh, you got your rice. It's all sticky and sweet and big hunks of sweet but spicy chicken. Uh, eat a bunch of that and then you kind of get it going. Then take your pull of your favorite grape soda. Um, let's, um, let's try this out. Diet Grapey Code. Oh man, that is so good. You gotta try that. That is so good. That's not only good for a, a diet grape soda, that's good for a grape soda in general. I think that is amazing. They always, Grapey Co. really knows how to do it. Is that not great? Oh my God, it's so sweet and grapey. It's grape not only great, it's grape. It's grape. Grape ape. Very great. Grape. And look, look, I'm wearing a purple shirt, uh, which makes me even more so look like the grape ape. Grape ape. Hey, that's all I got. Let's close down this edition of So To Speak. That's all I got, but it's legendary. Oh my God, I just spilled grapey coal on some 45s. Okay. Okay. All right, stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Here's what's happening. Oh my God. Oh my God, I got some grapey coal. At least they're not mine, they're cameramen's. That's that Peter Frampton we hey, played. Hey, now, what, at least they're how much grape goes on them now? Uh, look how grape the towel is. It's not very great. So. <laughs> oh yeah, it's purple. So it's, it looks, it's, not, it's more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw them at you. Oh. See how many you can catch. Catch. I don't know what happened. It was a minor, uh, minor technical difficulty. I say, I tell you what, folks, we're gonna go into a uh, into a damn old chip chat and uh, finish up this program this evening with a, a great chip chat. That, uh, God, I got this uh, liquid on my phone, too. Jesus, Harold. It was right on my 10-year-old uh, iPhone that I've got. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go right into a, a chip chat. Now, let me tell you something now. Um, we normally do a little open bag special here on the chip chat. Uh, tonight, we may or may not have a double open bag special because it's vacation time. Uh, and we may or may not have gotten hungry over the course of our vacation. So here we go. Now, I've mentioned uh, Pokrons before on the program. I refer to them as the hot cousin of the potato chip. Now, this is the holiday time. You may or may not have been over at your uh, relative's house and you got that one cousin that you're like, huh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. She's more than a second cousin, it's okay. Genetically speaking. Right. Everybody's got one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, I got a little pork rind flavor for your for your ass. Now, a local groceria here in the North Carolina area called Food Line. I don't know if you have Food Lines where you're from. They do a store brand of pork rinds. This is in the salt and pepper flavor. Um, they're fantastic. My mom keeps these uh, around pretty regular in the house. Very unique. Um, hold those guys up. Very unique uh, flavoring for a pork rind. Some people are very adverse to pork rinds. I think because of the name in general. Uh, I know several, especially girls, they won't eat them because they... Um, just because of the name. Mm. You know good. what I mean? But they're actually, I'll, I may prefer pork rinds to chips, I don't know. They've got their fl uh, uh, place. That's why they're the hot cousin, you know what I'm saying? Okay, now, that was gonna be an open bag special. I didn't necessarily mean for this next one to be an open bag special. Shit happens, man, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we're big fans of the uh, Tostitos artesian recipe, artisan. Artisan. I always say artesian. Don't say um, this is the uh, a new flavor I've not seen, the baked three cheese queso flavor. And um, really love these. These are getting kind of crumbly. We've eaten a lot of these. And the reason we have, I'm gonna also highlight this evening, a dip. Now we don't bring out dips very often but I do want to mention this one. 
Nothing too squirrely. It's from Tostitos. It's something you pick up in your local grocery area. This is a queso blanco dip, which tells me a white queso, a white cheese. Um, so uh, we, we tried it out earlier because uh, I prefer a straight cheese than I uh, do to a, a queso. I mean, to me. To me. Nothing wrong with a, you know, the salsa and the cheese mixed together. Cameron, if you would please. Let's hold these two guys up and grab you one on the way to it. Show off that jar there, if you wouldn't mind. Because I've not seen that before. It's very good. It's a little bit warm, but not crazy warm. Oh, it goes well with that Diet Grapico. That's good stuff, man. Those are fantastic. So this, these Tostitos are pretty, um, pretty consistent. The flavors, there's a Southwestern flavor they've got going on. There's another one I can't remember right now. Roasted red pepper, I believe, or something like that. They've always been pretty consistently good. So chalk that up. And this is also a great dip to go with this. You got bowl games right around the season, right around the season, right around the corner. Um, bowl games, Super Bowl. So the, uh, check this dip out. That's a good one to put on your table. You won't have to do a whole lot with that. You know what I mean? Just sit it out and let it uh, let it get eat. Got one more uh, chip I want to mention this week. This is from Cheetos, and I've seen this guy in the uh, on the grocery aisle. What you got there? I've seen this for a little bit. And uh, kind of disregarded it because it looked kind of funny. Uh, but I wanted to take a time to, uh, to uh, actually absorb this as a man eater. Man into eater. Your, into your cold now we got to hear Daryl Hall and John Oates. We got some. Yeah, we're, we'll listen to Man Eater coming up. We'll try. I swear to God. We'll try to find it. If we don't play Hall and Oates, I'll kill myself. Don't go that far. Uh, Cheetos mix ups, cheesy salsa mix. Now, hold this bag up before we open it, cameraman. Look at these different little shapes we got on the front and read those off. What are they? Because now I can't see them. What does it say they are? Chipotle cheddar. Chipotle salsa cheddar, salsa, cheddar, salsa picante, jalapeno cheddar. and jalapeno cheddar. They're all these different little shapes and different little it's flavors. Like this one. It's a green guy. Kind of looks like a turd. El gringo. Verde. That's what they say. So uh, the quarterback, Vinny Testaverde, would have been uh, Vinny Greenballs. True story. What do they look like? Weird? So it's a bunch of little cheese puff type things with different little flavors and shapes to it. These have kind of been sleeping. Uh, I've been sleeping on these. They look pretty, uh, okay, I got a green one. I got a green one, that's gonna be the hot one. Okay, let's take it easy. What's going on there? I don't know that that's, we don't need that type of, uh, we're not that type of program. Oh my, I had a green guy. Mm. I had the waffle looking guy. <laughs> these are fantastic. If you see these folks, give them a day in court for crying out loud. These are great. And I think these have been at most grocery stores. I've been out here recently. I always see them and because of the one that looked kind of waffly, I always imagine it's going to be like Cheetos mixed with pretzels, and I'm like, eh. I eat pretzels sometimes just to not be fat, but um, even though I am fat. But uh, I, I don't want to buy them for funsies, you know what I mean? But it's not a pretzel. It's a cheese pufferson uh, type material. Hey, that was a great chip chat. We're going to close it down. And that concludes the end of this program. This is going to be the end of a program. And uh, boy, we've had a good time. Got a lot of cool stuff for Christmas. Um, man, I'm just gonna crunch down on this. I, I dipped I dipped one of the cheese puffs into uh, into the cheese dip. Cause why wouldn't I do that? You do it. Hmm. Anyhow, this is probably the last of the Mahawk you'll see. And we appreciate everybody uh, spending their holiday evening here with us on Grown Man Record Night on our Ustream 
uh, live channel that we do every Friday night. And uh, also, uh, uh, you know, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. That's where all these segments end up. I'm a little behind. I'm trying to catch up a little bit uh, and get them all posted up to the YouTube channel so we can do our contest. and So they're not like four weeks behind and so they're so not topical anymore. But Ustream.com slash Machete Miller. So, hey, man, we appreciate you. We hope you had a great holiday season. I got a lot of cool records. I hope you got some cool records to play over holidays. Uh, if not, maybe some uh, record-related stuff. Hit us up and let us know what you got, man. What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get this Christmas? So uh, let us know about it, and we'll see you next week. Next week, next year, it's a brand-new deal, a 2014 uh, brand-new uh, deal to do here on Grown Man Record Night. So we appreciate you, and we'll see you next time. Uh, from all of us here at Grown Man Record Night, uh, Happy New Year, and uh, we'll see you soon.